Hey everyone, so it's, a, it's another set, another set of videos. This one, um, we'll be looking at, at Heidegger post being in time, so later Heidegger. Um, uh, and people often say that, that later Heidegger is, is different from kind of being in time Heidegger. They divide the two, Heidegger's um, philosophy into kind of two, later and earlier earlier being pretty much just being in time and then later um, the stuff the material that came afterwards and there is some merit in that I think it does kind of make sense he he does kind of shift focus a little bit and and, um, um, and uh, yeah it kind of comes at, at this his his project from a different different direction um, I don't know if you'd say he gave up or, or completely reversed, and he always said that that um, his work and being and time, it, it was never, um, he never renounces what he did, what he said, and for good reason, it's all good stuff in there, and it all applies, it, it's equally applicable, even though I think he does change direction a little bit um, later on, still, uh, Heidegger over his whole life, I think we can say, he had one goal, and that was to um, to get to talk about being. He was he was all of his philosophy. It was a search for being, and um, uh, and the it, being in time is part of that. But he 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 does um, kind of he doesn't he doesn't follow through with with what he intended with the rest of being in time. Being in time, um, he didn't publish all of it uh, so and and the reason is he didn't publish the second part of being in time I think he he uh, he, he realized that he that it wasn't going where he wanted it to go where it needed to go so uh, yeah so there's that later and earlier Heidegger distinction um, and this this whole series we'll just be looking at at uh, different lectures different essays and there are a couple of books in there as well that Heidegger's written post being in time um, so we'll work, work through all of that it's going to take a long time this one I think um, but no one said philosophy was easy and it's def if, you, if you're looking at Heidegger it's not like a, you know, a couple of weeks you can't just um, <clears throat> bang Heidegger out in a couple of weeks it's going to take months rather than, than weeks so anyway that's what we're, or if not years not, not that I'm going to drag out these videos for that long, but hopefully, hopefully not anyway. So anyway, the first video, this one is, it's about a, it's an inaugural lecture that Heidegger gave in 1929 at Freiburg University. So this is only two years after Being in Time was published. It's called What is Metaphysics? Um, and just in case you're wondering, I got this one this this um this lecture from here heidegger basic writings it's quite good it's got a lot of uh it's got six or seven um essays or lectures that heidegger gave kind of collected in one place so it's a nice um it's a it's a nice book to have if you're if you're interested in heidegger and uh what is metaphysics is 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 in there so it's the first one we'll look at in this series. Basically, he's going to look at um, negation versus nothing, or the nothing. Um, and yeah, let's get straight into it. So at the beginning, he says this uh, lecture, the title, despite the fact that the title is What is Metaphysics? It's, um, he says he's not going to discuss metaphysics he's not gonna going to um, kind of this lecture is not going to be about metaphysics rather he's going to ask a metaphysical question and this will let us kind of get immerse ourselves in metaphysics so rather than kind of looking at it from the outside trying to trying to um, define and describe from outside we're going to kind of delve straight into it and get get into the thick of it and get a get a feel for it that way rather than um, than a more uh, kind of academic approach I guess so he says there are two features for any metaphysical question 
The first is that it should encompass the whole range of metaphysical problems. So any metaphysical question you ask will encompass all metaphysical problems. The second feature is that they can only be asked from the essential position of existence, which is Dasein. And basically this is what he's getting at here, I think, is that um, it, any metaphysical question necessarily requires an interrogating being like Dasein. Um, like us so it can only come from from uh, a being that is is like us Dasein uh, and, and, and the question will also kind of turn around, flip around and impact that being as well so those are the two kind of the fe two features he says um, make up any metaphysical question and then he, he talks about uh, science, how we are scientific in nature, or, or we've become scientific in nature anyway. And then he asks, what does that, what does that mean? What is, what is uh, science? What are the roots of science? And this, by the way, is a question that he thinks um, hasn't been asked anymore. It's been, it's been kind of lost. No one asks what the grounding for science is anymore. And, uh, and it, it's, a, it's a crucial question because often, and especially these days in, in our um, you know, exclusively almost science-driven um, environment, you know, all of our, um, our physicists, our scientists, they are kind of the, the, um, it's the that's like the gold standard for, um, for knowledge, for truth. That's who we turn to, and that, that's that, that's the age we live in, the scientific age. It's just um, the scientific age, uh, you know, if we want to know truth, we turn to science for that. If we want to know about reality, we turn to science for that, and we expect that they can give us the answers, and they tell us they can. They tell us that their answers are the ones. Um, but Heidegger's saying we need to, we need to ask uh, look beyond science. What is science grounded in? Where is science coming from? Um, and uh, and in doing that, he gives us he comes up with three um, roots, I guess you could say, of science, or three three aspects of science at, at the core of science. The first is it's a relation to the world, so it kind of it demands a relation with the world and that means with beings beings in the world um, the second is a it, it's it has a it needs a freely chosen attitude so there's, there's a certain scientific attitude that comes with um, well sorry there's a certain attitude that comes with this this whole idea of scientific explanation and exploration and that again is an attitude towards beings in the world so things that are in the world and the third feature is it, it's an eruption he calls um, and that's I-R-R U-P-T-I-O and not eruption eruption um, and what he means by this is that it's, it's an eruption into the whole of beings and it kind of breaks them open to show what they are and how they are so it's this eruption into beings. Um, again, there's that idea going into beings as things in the world. But each at each of these points, he adds something at the end. So he says, for example, for the first one, relation. Um, where is it? I got it. It's a relation refers it's the relation which refers to beings themselves and nothing besides. The second one is the um, the attitude directs itself towards beings themselves and nothing further. And the last one is the eruption into the whole of beings. It's a confrontation with beings themselves and nothing and beyond that nothing. 
And so we've got that, that addition at the end of each of those points referring to nothing. It's beings and nothing else. It's an attitude towards beings and beyond that, nothing. So there's always this, this we've, we've, we've tagged on this, this, um, this little point about nothing, beyond that nothing. Only this. But he asks, so what is this nothing that we're talking about? Can we delete it from these, from these points and lose nothing? Or, or is it essential? Does it actually have some meaning? Does it have some content here? What is this nothing? And that is um, the question that's gonna, that, that Heidegger starts from. So we're looking at this idea of nothing. What is it? Can we talk about it? What does it mean? So we, uh, we move into the next section there and uh, Heidegger attacks this idea, this idea of the nothing from a scientific or a logical perspective or an intellectual perspective, which, would, which says nothing. You can't think about it. You can't talk about it. Um, it it's a meaningless concept, right? Uh, because as soon as you try to investigate nothing, make an object out of nothing, then you've, you've, it turns into something, right? You can't have a thought about nothing. If you're thinking about nothing, then nothing, because the nature of thought, subject, object. So as soon as you think you're, you're discussing or thinking about nothing, what you've done, all you've done, is turn that, that concept into something. If, if it wasn't something, how could you think about it? And this is an idea, actually, that goes back to Parmenides, right, who said you can't talk about non-being. Um, so that, that's a logical approach to this, scientific approach, kind of stops, it, uh, stops our inquiry in its tracks. But Heidegger says, let's, let's just keep at it and see what happens. Let's just... Uh, let's not stop there. Let's let's push it a bit. So a definition of nothing is Heidegger gives is a complete negation of the totality of beings. So in other words, it's non-being. Um, and so he wonders then: Is this what nothing is, or or does this precede nothing? This idea of um, negation. Just a negation, a logical, kind of conceptual negation. So we have this idea of being, or beings, and that's what's real. And is the nothing just a negation, just negating that, that kind of abstract concept, uh, which is real. Uh, sorry, so that the beings are real. Are we just negating those beings and, and getting kind of an abstract idea of what nothing is through through um, real beings uh, and that's that's this analytical um, logical concept of um, negation so we do do we get to nothing from this idea of negation so we have beings we negate them with it with a non right beings non-being and then that gives us nothing or is nothing um, deeper? Is it the other way around? Do we get the idea of negation from nothing? Is nothing de is nothing deeper than this negation? Um, so the, the the question, and this is what's going to drive the rest of the essay uh, of the lecture, is which is prior, negation or nothing? Is nothing grounded in negation? A logical analytical idea or is that logical analytical negation grounded in a deeper nothing we'll have to have a look so uh, what we can say here then is to experience nothing we must be able to experience beings as a whole so if if it's possible to experience nothing we must be able to experience beings as a whole why because uh, without something to negate, without there being something to to um, to to uh, to negate, then um, 
then there's no way we can get nothing from it, right? So to experience this idea of nothing, there has we have to have some experience of beings as a whole. So you might think, well, we can we can imagine all beings. I can imagine beings as a whole, and then just in my mind, kind of negate that um, in my imagination. Will that do it? No, Heidegger says that's just something in your imagination. That's just an abstract concept. You're not really experiencing nothing. So we want to go deeper than that. We want to get to an experience of nothing. So he, <clears throat> on the way there, he distinguishes between comprehending the whole of beings in themselves and finding oneself in the midst of beings as a whole. So the first of those two two things, comprehending the whole of beings in themselves, is impossible, he says. We'll never get that, that we'll never experience beings as a whole like that. Um, but that second point, finding oneself in the midst of beings as a whole, we do experience that, and we experience it all the time. In fact, it's, it's at the core of human existence, of what it means to be human, is to be in the midst of beings as a whole. And that's what care is. That's what we saw being in the world, right, and being in time. So we have this idea. Um, we, we can find ourselves in the midst of beings as a whole, and this lets us experience beings as a whole without kind of abstracting ourselves back from it and and trying to to comprehend all of all of beings all of being um, kind of from the outside we can we can we're in the middle of it and we can still manage to um, to, to to get this understanding this this experience from being in the midst of it and he says we do this we can do this through two ways. Well, we can do this through any number of ways. He gives two examples. The first is boredom. But it's not boredom... Um, it's not being bored of this or that particular thing. It's a, it's a more profound boredom, he calls it. Kind of like a boredom with everything. And, and when you have that, that kind of feeling, it's deeper. It, it, it gets to a deeper place place than just this kind of um, like a local boredom where you're bored with this or that if you're you're just at this at this point of total I don't know ennui you're just totally you know bored with not with with things but with everything with existence perhaps it's it's deeper so in this from from here you have a, an intimation or an experience of beings as a whole, and and that experience is coloured in in this in in light of this boredom that you're feeling. It it gets it, it's deeper than just a kind of surface boredom with this or that thing. We're bored with everything. We're bored with um, it, this this idea of this profound boredom. It kind of seeps into us, and 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 um, what's the word I'm looking for? And um, not colours, but it, it uh, pervades everything around us, and it's that that gives us this experience of being bored with ev everything, all beings, this this whole totality of beings. So there's that. There's boredom. Um, and, and a way to think about this, I, I think, is, is with the idea of attunement, which we saw in Being and Time. Attunement um, as this way of kind of orienting ourselves towards existence. And, uh, and so it, it's like emotions, but emotions are kind of surface level. Attunement is, is, a, is a deeper more profound connection or, or orientation towards things. And I think this is what Heidegger is getting at here. This boredom, this profound boredom seeps into us. And it's when we have this experience, we, we, we do have this sense of, of um, boredom before all beings. And the other um, way, he says, we can feel it 
or the other example he gives is joy in the presence of the Dasein and not simply of the person of a human being whom we love. And again, I think the way to think about this is it's not it's not joy through um, this or that person through the love you might have for this or that person, but it's it's a deeper sense of joy that that um, that gets into you and and it pervades the way that you see everything, and so you have this sense of of being surrounded by or, or being maybe in 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 touch with connected to beings as a whole, rather than just <coughs> individual beings. So anyway, there's. So we have this 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 possibility to experience beings as a whole, um, and then we we move to anxiety. He moves to talk about anxiety, and this experience of anxiety doesn't reveal beings, doesn't reveal beings as a whole like board like that profound boredom and joy, but it reveals the nothing directly. So. We can experience beings as a whole through certain um, emotions or, or feelings, boredom, joy, but anxiety lets us re reveals the nothing to us directly. It doesn't reveal beings as a whole; it reveals the nothing. That's Heidegger's. That's what Heidegger says here. Um, and if you think about it, this ties in again with with a point from being in time, but he talks about anxiety and being in time um, and how you're not anxious of this or that thing in the world, this or that being. You're anxious of um, existence itself, of being in the world. That's where, that's where the anxiety is coming from. You're anxious about, not about this or that being, but you're anxious about being in the world itself, existence itself. Um, and he doesn't talk about it in being in time as related to the nothing, and so that's that's where this we're extending what um, what Heidegger talked about in, in being in time. Um, and so in this feeling of anxiety, he says the quote is all things and we ourselves sink into indifference and so that it's it's not just uh, again it's not just kind of bored with this or that thing or indifferent towards this or that thing it's an indifference that that grasps us at our core <clears throat> um, and and affects everything but in such a way that everything loses meaning loses um, context, relevance, significance, it all drops away. And that is, the ex is an experience of nothing. So what is this nothing then? So we have this experience, we, we can get this experience through anxiety. What is it though? Well the first thing we can say is that the nothing that we experience here, it's not revealed as a being or an object. So it's not revealed as just another being um, like other beings in the world, nor is it an object. So it's not an object for our, um, for us to, to, we can't grasp it as an object and kind of analyze it, dissect it, look at it um, <clears throat> like we can with other objects that, um, that say occur in logic and, and, and which we can reason about. It's not that kind of, um, we don't have that kind of relation with this, 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 this feeling, this experience of nothing. <clears throat> but also, nothing is encountered with, with beings as a whole. So it's not, we talked about this idea, um, negation, uh, nothing being the complete negation of the totality of beings so that might lead you to think well it's it's the absence of being right? it's getting rid of all being and what we're left with will be nothing but that's actually not what anxiety um, reveals to us 
rather we have this we have this feeling we have this experience of the nothing and anxiety but beings as a whole don't disappear they're not annihilated is the word that Heidegger uses so it doesn't annihilate beings nor does it negate them it doesn't negate them it doesn't um, <clears throat> it doesn't negate them in the sense of, of, of non-being making them non-being in some way so it's not an, an annihilation uh, and it's not a negation either Heidegger says anxiety finds itself precisely in utter impotence with regard to beings as a whole so that's the connection so we that's why we need beings as a whole with this this feeling of negation uh, with sorry with this feeling of the nothing because without beings as a whole then we don't have that feeling right the, this feeling of of the nothing <clears throat> is it, it requires beings as a whole because in 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 the sensation in this experience in anxiety everything sinks into indifference but that everything has to be there as well so we can't get rid of it it's not an annihilation of being it's not a negation of being it's it's um, anxiety in the face of being beings as a whole um, so the nothing is not annihilation or negation it is a annihilation Heidegger says and so he says that well the situation here is the nothing itself annihilates so the nothing that, that feeling that we uh, can experience through anxiety annihilates all beings it renders um, it, it renders us impotent towards with regard beings as a whole <clears throat> uh, and that's kind of cool actually it's kind of interesting right that nothing itself annihilates it might take a while to get your head around that but uh, but that but yeah I, th I think it does make sense <laughs> so give it give it some time work on it um, and you might think that this is a kind of a negative concept it might it's, it's like a uh, I don't mean negative like the way I've been using it and the rest of what I've said before negative like bad something destructive or it's not something um, or it sounds like something kind of not good right it's annihilating it's this uh, this experience and that nothing is annihilating everything <clears throat> but it's not it's not bad Heidegger thinks because in this act of, of annihilation the nothing discloses beings as beings as what is radically other with respect to the nothing and so this is a, this is an important point the that annihilation that uh, that it's not really an act but I'll use the word that act of annihilation um, in in kind of in kind of appearing or, or, or manifesting uh, through anxiety that 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 nothingness that that um, takes a hold of us through anxiety through that beings are revealed as beings without that without that nothing without that annihilation there are no beings we can't have this, this experience or this understanding or this apprehension or perception of beings as beings and I think the way to think about this is to um, to think about if uh, pretty much anything where, where you have say uh, you only have one particular kind of experience you know imagine that you were raised uh, in a very sheltered environment you never um, experienced or heard about any kind of any kind of 
meanness or cruelty or you know you you were surrounded by just love and compassion and generosity everybody around you was nice and and that was all you ever knew if that was the case you wouldn't actually know what generosity is you wouldn't know what compassion was because that's not because that's normal but because you've never experienced anything else there is no contrast so you, you would just have no concept of compassion without its opposite and I think that's the way to think about this you uh, Heidegger is saying that that um, this experience of the nothing for the first time brings into kind of stark relief this radical other which is its opposite being beings that's what that's what lets them appear that's what lets beings appear as beings in the first place so this this nothing this annihilation is a it's not only not a bad thing it's it's the core of experience of existence it's what makes beings a be beings it's what reveals beings as beings um, and Heidegger will go a little bit further with this too and say that that this is actually the meaning of the word Dasein of what well, not the word, but of Dasein itself, the meaning of Dasein is, quote, being held out into the nothing, end quote. So that's, that's what it means to be Dasein, is to be held out into this nothing, is to, um, through anxiety, it's to, to um, experience the nothing, and through that experience, through this annihilation, that's how beings appear as beings and that's cool I think that's interesting uh, and this this idea of of Dasein in each case already being beyond beings as a whole um, because we're beyond beings as a whole we, we, we've, we've gone beyond them we've gone beyond that into this realm of nothing so Dasein is already beyond beings as a whole and this being beyond beings he calls transcendence so that's what transcendence is this this um, and it's metaphysics right being beyond beings that, that's that's literally what metaphysics means so Dasein is already beyond beings by being held out into the nothing. I like that expression, being held out into the nothing, grasping, not, not grasping, there's no grasping here that requires an object, but um, experiencing the nothing through anxiety and that illuminates or reveals beings as beings. So what we have here then is, is this idea that the nothing actually lies at the root of everything. It's at the very root of being, like capital B being, that, that, that being that Heidegger's searching for. And that, that being is, um, it's basically what it means is that by which beings appear as beings. So it's that, it's, that that's this when I say capital B being, it's um. It's the meaning is that by which beings appear as beings, and so we've seen that the nothing is central to that. This this idea, this experience of nothing, is central to being, to being itself, um, including Dasein. Right? It's at the root of everything, beings and. Dasein, Dasein is, is, is part of this. So, then, 
We can go back to our, the, the driving question was, uh, is nothing prior to negation or is negation prior to nothing? And the answer seems obvious now. How, how could negation as a logical, analytical, um, rational, intellectual term concept, how could it be prior here? Um, the nothing is what gets us to beings as beings. It's only after we have beings as beings that we can then negate them, right? It's only then that negation can only can only come into play. Logic can only come into play. The intellect, reason can only come into play when there are beings to reason about, when there are beings to negate. But to get to that point in the first place, to get to beings appearing as beings, we need the nothing we've seen. And we need Dasein holding out, holding itself out into the nothing or being held out into the nothing. So clearly negation is grounded in the nothing. The nothing is, is prior, foundational here. And this also tells us that logic um, and that analytical approach is insufficient when it comes to being itself. When I say being itself, I think capital B being, like the the I'm going to use the uh, the word being itself um, to indicate that term, that idea, rather than saying capital B being all the time. So uh, so logic is insufficient when it comes to being itself. Um, and we've seen that just it just breaks down. It doesn't work at this level, right? And um, that's what this what this whole kind of investigation has has shown. You might say then, of course, shouldn't we then be if if nothing is that by which beings appear as beings, and we experience the nothing in anxiety? Shouldn't since beings that always appear as beings, shouldn't we be in kind of anxiety all the time? And Heidegger says yes, we should. And he also says we are. It's just that that anxiety is covered over. We lose ourselves among beings in a certain way and turn toward them in our preoccupations. So this is that um, falling prey, that's inauthenticity that was that Heidegger talked a lot about in, in being in time. Um, so we do we are anxious all the time. It's always there. We just um, turn away from it, if you like. We just, we ignore it. We try and ignore it. And he has a, an, a kind of cool quote. He says, anxiety is there. It is only sleeping. Its breath quivers perpetually through Dasein. Um, cool. And I'm just going to take a quick break there because... Up to that point, you may have noticed if you've read Being and Nothingness by um, Sartre, a crazy um, similarity there between, between this and, especially, I think it's chapter two in Being and Nothingness. Sartre talks about the problem of nothingness. And it's essentially this whole lecture. He, he takes, I mean, I read Being and Nothingness before I, I read this lecture, and I thought at the time, well, this is amazing, groundbreaking stuff, you know, Sartre, he's, he's gone off the, off the reservation and into uncharted territory with this. But it's straight from here, it's straight from Heidegger. Um, of course, yeah, it, I mean, even the, the whole premise of, of that chapter is which is prior, negation or the nothingness. Um, so it's really kind of amazing to see that, that, you know, that's the influence that Heidegger had here. But having said that, Sartre does take the, the idea of the nothingness and, and uses it in a completely different, different way from Heidegger. But, uh, but anyway, it, there is a huge, huge... Um, parallel between the two and it's interesting if, if you haven't checked out 
being a nothingness, I recommend you do and just see the, the similarities there. Uh, so anyway, we're going to finish up this, uh, this lecture. And it, Heidegger does this by, by going back to what he said at the beginning about metaphysical questions. He said there are two features, if you recall. They encompass the whole range of metaphysical problems and they um, turn on Dasein in some way. They, they impact Dasein, the, the questioner, in some integral way. So does this question um, conform to those? Does it match those criteria? And uh, we have the first one. Is it does it encompass the whole range of metaphysical problems? Well, considering what we found that that nothing lies essentially at the heart of being itself, it's that it's it's part of the um, that inceptual. Uh, it's not a process, but that inceptual beginning whereby beings manifest as beings. So in that sense. It's 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 right at the the beginning, so in that sense it does encompass all metaphysical problems because it's it's right at the inception of metaphysics itself. So check for that. The second one does it impact Dasein as as the questioner? Does it does it reflect back? Absolutely. We saw that Dasein is um, the nothing is is um, experienced. By Dasein through anxiety, by by Dasein holding itself out into the nothing, and in that sense, there, there's kind of this idea, and it will come up later. He doesn't talk about it here, but Dasein as being the um, kind, it's not exactly right, but it, Dasein as the location of this opening, this clearing, in which beings appear as beings or are revealed as beings. So, in that sense, yes, this it, it, it reflects back on Dasein. It means that um, we now question Dasein itself. Dasein itself is now up for question. And this, this concept of the nothing got us there. Right? Um, so, the conclusion is yes, our inquiry into the nothing, what is, what is the nothing, is definitely a metaphysical question. Um, and there are just two more points I want to make to finish. He, uh, he says a couple of interesting things. One is about science and the other is about Dasein. So the, the point about science, he says that this science turns out to be possible only on the basis of nothing, or this holding itself out into the nothing, this being held out into the nothing. So this experience of nothing turns out to ground science. So science is grounded in metaphysics, um, which no scientist is going to be pleased to hear. So that's a secret. Don't tell them. Um, and there's another interesting um, thing, which, which a kind of consequence of that is that... Um, since science is grounded in metaphysics, it turns out that this means that philosophy as metaphysics can't be measured by the standards of science. And that's interesting and, and relevant, especially to, to um, our day and age, where you know, we are seeing people like intellectual luminaries of our time coming out and saying things like philosophy is dead, right? Or, or questioning philosophy. What is philosophy? Um, where's the progress? Look, at, we can chart the progress of science, um, but but where's the progress of philosophy? We're still talking about Plato and Aristotle two and a half thousand years ago. We're still grappling with those same problems. And uh, and basically, Heidegger's addressed that that objection here by saying you can't measure philosophy by the standards of science because philosophy is at a 
deeper level. It, it's that's what grounds science. You can't then turn around and use science, which comes on top, to measure um, or to provide the the standards by which we can we we measure philosophy. So it's just got everything around backwards, and I fully agree with that. that I'm I'm really on board with that idea at the moment. And uh, the second point was about Dasein, human existence. So it's that in holding itself out into the nothing, um, the essence of Dasein then is to go beyond beings. We've seen that. We go, Dasein is going beyond beings through this, through experiencing the nothing. Uh, but that means that metaphysics is the basic occurrence of Dasein. And another way to say that is that metaphysics is Dasein. So that, and that's a bit deeper. It's not just that, you know, Dasein's not just doing metaphysics. Dasein is metaphysics. And that was a way of talking that we encountered in being in time a lot. We encountered it in Sartre a lot. And it's going to continue through, it's going to get even, even worse uh, as we get, uh, as we go through um, Heidegger post being in time, metaphysics is Dasein. It's it's not just what we do; it's what we are. Um, okay, cool. And that is the first. What is metaphysics? Um, yeah, I've, I I hope to to keep the videos coming a bit faster. Um, this time around, there was a bit of a, a long break there. Uh, I think the last video I posted was about three months ago. So anyway, hopefully um, tune in again and uh, and we'll progress with some more post-BNT Heidegger. Thanks for listening. See ya.